Um, I was asked to present today to give a little bit more information about VA loans. Um, this is something that's actually near and dear to my heart. I am from Southern California. My dad was in the Navy, and I 100% know that we would not have the home I grew up in without this VA loan program. So um, I feel, feel very strongly about it, and I know a lot about it. A lot of my clients are either former or current military service members, so I'm happy to be your resource if you have any questions. Um, all right, so let me get to my presentation. Excuse me. All righty. Um, let me know if you have any issues seeing my presentation. No, we're all good. Um, okay. I think we let might be me, seeing the final slide, though. Yes. Let me. Um, all righty. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, you're all good. You're all good. All righty. All right. Are we good? Yes. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> all right. So once again, my name is Aislinn, and I'm going to go over basically what a VA loan is. Um, who's eligible, what the benefits are, pros and cons, and some of the things that you might encounter when um, deciding if a VA loan is something you'd like to go for with your client. Okay, so I'm not going to read these verbatim, but um, you're, you're free to read the slide and I'll kind of just touch base on all of the things involved. All right, so first off, a VA loan is a government-backed mortgage program that's available to anybody who's formerly served um, and has been discharged honorably, um, someone who's currently serving, or any of their surviving spouses. The most important thing is that they meet certain eligibility requirements. And I have um, resources that can show you exactly who can and cannot qualify. Um, a VA funding fee, which is basically um, what they charge to get a VA home loan without a down payment would be. Um, there's no mortgage insurance required, which is a big plus because a lot of times if you put less than 20% down, you need mortgage insurance. Um, the program, because it's government backed, it typically has lower interest rates and closing costs. Um, one of the great things about a VA home loan is that there are higher debt to income ratios. I've seen people qualify with like 70 something plus and ratios, which is crazy, but as long as you get DU approval, a lot of lenders will let the VA loan go through. Um, one of our lenders right now allows uh, FICO scores as low as 580, but um, overall, most of the lenders that we work with do want at least a 620 FICO. So what is the home loan guarantee? Um, it basically means that if a borrower defaults, the VA will reimburse the lender up to 25% of the loss. And um, this takes place of the down payment, which is why um, a down payment is not required for a service member unless they've already down, um, I'm sorry, unless they've already used a VA home loan on another property that they are still retaining. All righty, who is eligible for a home loan, a VA home loan? It same thing what I said earlier, active duty service members, veterans with discharges other than dishonorable, members of the National Guard and Reserve and some of their spouses, as long as they're eligible, um, that there is a web link right there that shows where you can get a list of who can get the VA home loan. And um, something called a certificate of eligibility is required. That is basically a form that either the service member or the lender requests from the VA that shows whether or not someone is entitled to receive a VA home loan, and if they are eligible, how much entitlement they have to go toward the loan. So it is extremely important that you ask any of your clients if anybody on the loan has served previously or is currently serving because um, in my career, I've actually come across many people who did not know that they could get a VA home loan and they missed out on the opportunity and they're kind of coming into the game a little late. So it's it's really sad because they do a lot to serve the country. And um, this is like one of the best loan programs out there. So if they don't know that they have access to it, they can't take advantage of it. So 
ask your clients. And I think the um, 1003, which is the loan application, now has a section that asks about military service, where previously it did not. All righty. Um, besides the benefits that I had mentioned earlier, here are some other ones that are fantastic. So um, there will be more buying power with the VA home loan because one, the debt to income ratios are a lot higher and two, military service members who are currently active get a housing allowance and a subsidence allowance. And because those are tax-free allowances, we can actually gross up that income by 25%, which makes their um, ability to purchase a lot bigger. So you can be more competitive versus people who are trying to get, let's say, conventional loans with uh, tighter restrictions. Um, another great thing is if they have not used this home loan benefit and they don't currently have a home that retains a VA home loan, there is no loan limit and there is no down payment. So you can get multi-million dollar house as long as they qualify um, without having to put a down payment. Um, in the past, impounds, which is taxes and insurance, used to be required for all VA loans. They actually changed that guideline and some lenders are willing to waive that requirement as long as you meet FICO and debt to income, or, I'm sorry, and LTV requirements. So the benefit of that is that there's going to be less money due at closing. Um, if you're receiving service connected disability or um, fall into a category that waives the VA funding fee, you can save a ton of money that way. Otherwise, if you're not eligible to get the funding fee waived, um, you can finance it into the loan or paid in full at closing to reduce your loan amount. And one of the other things that I love about the VA home loan is that there's protection for your buyers via the VA escape clause because in the event that the home doesn't appraise for the contract price, your buyer can walk away and not be penalized. They can get all of their EMD back. Um, any questions thus far? We're all good? Can you hear me? Yes, Aislinn, we can hear okay. you. Yeah. Got it. Um, sorry, if I'm going too fast, let me know too. Of course. And then if anyone wants to um, ask a question, feel free to utilize the chat. As always, um, You, if you are a little bit shy, you don't necessarily want to unmute. That is always an option as well. Okay. And then Ely, you could just let me know because I can't see the chat on my end from of my Of course. Of course. Okay. I'm monitoring the chat right now. So don't awesome. you worry about that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Some things to consider for VA purchases. So like I mentioned, I'm from Southern California, specifically San Diego. So I grew up in a very, very heavily military based community. So I personally, like I always thought, oh, VA loans are just a big thing here. No one's ever, you know, had an issue. And then I started talking to other realtors that come from different areas um, of, the, of the state. And they said that they've been encountering some resistance or some reluctance from sellers not wanting to sell to people who want a VA home loan. And I think the reason is they don't really understand the program. They're kind of hearing, oh, it's very restrictive. There's too many um, hoops to jump through, lots of obstacles, et cetera, et cetera. That actually is not the case. I think that they just don't know um, kind of the ins and outs of it. Honestly, VA is probably one of the strongest buyers that you can ever encounter. They have a lot of buying power. Their credit scores are typically very good. Uh, my borrowers in particular are extremely organized and very good at getting me documents like ASAP. So um, it could just be like the military background knowing we need this now, you get it to me now type of mindset. But I love working with the VA um, service members. Um, the, I think a lot of things that they're worried about is the appraisal. They think it's a lot more stringent when really it's not, it's just trying to make sure that the home that the person's trying to purchase is, you know, livable and safe. And I mean, if you wanted to buy a house, you would want those things too. So I don't think there's anything really crazy. Um, uh, one of the things that I mentioned was that if someone has never had a VA home loan or they have, but they have not retained the house that they used to purchase with that loan, 
they um, do not need a down payment. However, um, in some cases, like for instance, I had a client call me a couple days ago. He bought a house with me maybe in 2019, and now he wants to purchase a bigger home. And he was asking, can I get two VA home loans? The answer is yes. The only thing is that there are a little bit more restrictions um, when you want to utilize a VA home loan again while retaining the previous one. Um, there will be a down payment typically involved because there's only a set amount of entitlement given to each person. And once they use it up, then we have to kind of go through a different type of calculation. Uh, I will go over that in later slides. Um, one thing to be really considerate of is that if you are, um, if you have an active duty service member, they have to have at least 12 months left of service on their LES, which is kind of like the military version of a pay stub beyond the closing date, or you're going to need um, documentation that they will re-enlist in order to count their military income. Another thing is that the VA guarantees the loan, but not the condition of the property. So yes, it needs to meet minimum property requirements for an appraisal, but as far as everything else, do your due diligence, make sure that the home meets the expectations of the buyer, um, and just let them know that that's kind of, you know, how it goes. Uh, another thing is that only primary residences are allowed for VA purchase loans. You are not allowed to buy it for investment. However, you can refinance down the road um, and then turn that into an investment property. But that's where we kind of get into the sticky part of if you want to buy another house with a VA loan, you might want to sell that house to get your full entitlement back or you're going to need to put out a down payment. All right, the other thing is that the VA will only guarantee up to the appraised value. So if, um, if it comes in less, they're gonna either have to rene renegotiate the price or come in with the difference. Um, the funding fee can be financed, but not any of the closing costs. So your borrower will have to either come in with that money at closing or choose an interest rate that will cover the closing costs. However, refinances can include the closing costs. Um, maximum seller concessions is 4% of the purchase price or the appraised value, whichever is less. And that's just to make sure that, you know, there's enough skin in the game for um, the buyer. Um, as mentioned, the VA funding fee will apply unless they're exempt and there will be a list of who qualifies for exemption, which is a big, big savings. Um, and then here's another thing. Um, typically, the only co-borrower allowed on a VA loan is a spouse. Um, there might be some lenders out there who are willing to do joint loans, which means a veteran and a non-spouse, but that's very hard to come by. And I think it's because it, it's a little bit more risky for the lender. Um, the other thing is that let's just say you have a husband and wife and the spouse doesn't have a very strong credit score, so they want to keep them off the loan. Um, in a community property state with a VA loan, it doesn't matter whether the spouse is on or off, their um, debt and obligations will be considered as part of the DTI. Their credit score will not, but their debts will be. So that's something to consider when um, talking to your clients. And if they want to buy a condo, it has to be on the VA approved list. If it is not, they cannot get a VA loan for that condo. Um, an appraisal is required and it does need to meet minimum property requirements to make sure that it's safe, sanitary and structurally sound. Um, something called a Tidewater Initiative is basically what you encounter if the appraiser goes in does the appraisal and realizes that the um, appraised value that they're considering is less than what the contract price is. So what they'll do is they'll alert us and they'll say, hey, you know, contract price is 700. I think it's going to come in at 650. You have two business days to come in with comps to support the value. And the good news about that is that it kind of just gives you a little bit of wiggle room to try to see if um, you know, you can find something that supports the value. Otherwise, the, the client will have to come in with a difference unless the seller is willing to renegotiate down, which is also sometimes a good thing because then your borrower can get the house for less than what they intended. Um, 
And then if they cannot come to an agreement and the buyer wants to cancel, or even if they can come, but they just don't like what they, uh, the house appraises for, they have the ability to walk away and keep their earnest money deposit. And then if they want to continue with the purchase, they just have to come in with a difference in price. Any questions? Nope. Okay. <laughs> um, any out-of-pocket fees for the inspection, appraisal, and credit report are not refundable if the purchase is canceled. And if they're buying a new build and they put in upgrades, they also cannot get their money back. So that is just something to think about. Um, and in the past, the termite inspection and clearance were paid for by the seller, but um, there was a little bit of pushback because some people were saying the sellers are, are refusing to, you know, sell to my client because they feel like they are going to be paying for things that traditionally they wouldn't have to pay for for a non-VA buyer. So in order to combat that, they finally changed the law and in 2022, they allowed buyers to pay for those items. All right, funding fee. The VA funding fee is the whole thing behind the VA home loan. Um, it's a one-time fee paid to the Department of Veteran Affairs when someone obtains a VA loan. Um, the reason for this is because it's it makes it more sustainable. Um, of course, you know, not every person will fulfill their requirement or their obligation to pay off their loan. So if some people fall on hard times, or they just default on the loan, um, this is the money that goes to pay back what's due. Um, it's a percentage of the loan amount, and that percentage will depend on whether it's a refi, a purchase, whether you've used it once or you've used it a second time, and so many other factors. I'll have a funding fee table later in the presentation. And the funding fee is required for every single purchase and every single refinance, unless the borrower borrower meets certain criteria to be exempt from that funding fee. So this is the table that I was talking about. Uh, prior to April 7th of last year, the funding fees were actually um, higher than this. So I'm glad that they reverted back to the lower funding fees. But um, if you take a look, you can kind of just scan over it and see that, you know, no down payment is required. But if you do put a down payment, the funding fee percentage is reduced. Um, if it's your first time using the VA home loan, then your funding fee is less than someone who has already used it before. Um, VA cash out refinances, they also have to pay the funding fee. Uh, that's why it's sometimes quite expensive or not even feasible to do a VA cash out refinance because as you'll see later on, um, the dollar amounts kind of add up and sometimes it completely negates the the um, benefit of <laughs> cashing out money for that loan. Uh, a lot of my refinance personally have been by people who are exempt, so they have nothing to lose. They don't have to pay a funding fee. They get the lower rates. They get you know all the benefits of the VA home loan without having to pay that fee. That essentially just increases their their borrowing. All right. <clears throat> so these are the people who are exempt from the funding fee. Um, in a nutshell, it's basically anyone who's getting disability, who um, is a surviving spouse, or who falls into the other categories where they are supposed to get the um, exemption later. Um, I have people who have a job lined up after they retire, and so they wait until they get their funding fee exemption because it can save you know 20 plus thousand dollars in closing costs for this funding fee but on the other hand you kind of have to weigh it out too because um you also don't want to lose that military income if you know they're going to be retiring within 12 months um these are the funding fee examples for someone who does not put a down payment um if it's your very first time using it it's a 2.15 funding fee versus a 3.3. But you can see that, um, you know, all things being equal for a $700,000 home, if you have never used it before, you're actually saving $8,050 compared to someone who would have used it again. All right, this gets a little bit messy and complicated. I know there's a lot of numbers on this. Um, but if you want a copy of this slide to kind of guide you on 
clients who've already used their remaining entitlement, I'm happy to send this to you. Um, I'm also happy to walk you through and calculate it myself. Um, but basically, this is saying that if you've already used your VA loan and you want to retain the home and you want to buy a different home to live in because it has to be a primary residence, it will then fall into the conforming county loan limit guidelines. And it just basically means that they'll guarantee 25% of the conforming county loan limit. But then you have to reduce that by the amount of entitlement you've already used. And then you calculate that by four. And then that's the amount um, you're allowed to borrow without a down payment. So if the home price is above that, you're going to make a down payment of 25% of the difference. So in this um, example, the house is 700,000. If the conforming loan limit is 766,550 and someone's already used their entitlement on a $350,000 loan amount, they need to come in with almost $80,000 down payment. However, in San Diego, where our conforming loan limit's over a million, uh, that same scenario, they would only need a close to 11,000 down payment. So it's a big difference. Um, one of the other factors to consider for a VA home loan is that they require residual income. That basically means after all said and done with all of your debts, your mortgage, you know, PITIA, and depending on your family size and where you live, you will need a certain dollar amount left over in order to qualify. And that's just to make sure that you can take care of your family or yourself and you have enough money to meet your other obligations. Uh, one thing to know is that if you have children that require daycare or, you know, some sort of paid child care, they will ask you about that. And that will be taken into consideration for your debt to income ratio. Um, a lot of times, though, my military family members have, you know, grandparents or somebody to watch their kids and they don't charge them. So it's a little bit easier to meet this residual income requirement. But if they are not, let's say they're in another city and there's no one to to watch their children and they do have to pay, it gets a little bit tight and sometimes they may not have enough residual income to meet the requirement. All right. Um, when I mentioned that they have the ability to refinance down the road, um, it's called a VA Earl. It's an amazing program. Basically, no um, appraisal, income, asset, or credit documents needed as long as your interest rate doesn't go up and your payments don't exceed 20%. Um, typically, though, people don't refinance into a higher rate. The only time that happens is if they're trying to go from an arm to a fixed, but that typically doesn't really happen. Um, most of the time they are doing the refinance to reduce their rate. Um, they do have a requirement that the new rate has to be at least 0.5% uh, lower than the current rate if they're going from fixed to fix or 2% lower if they're going from fixed to arm. And that's just to make sure that there's a net tangible benefit that um, the, the borrower is getting. Um, the fees that are incurred have to be recouped within 36 months. So let's just say, you know, $5,000 worth of fees over 36 months, they have to make sure they recoup that with the difference in savings. And the new loan term can't exceed their original loan term by more than 10 years. So if their original VA loan was a 15 year loan, they can't get a 30 year refi. They have to save 25 years or less. Um, one of the things doesn't really pertain to um, real estate officers, but loan officers, um, we do get protection from early payoffs because the VA will not allow anybody to um, refinance out of a VA loan into a VA EARL unless 210 days of seasoning pass, which is the waiting period from the due date of the first mortgage payment. And um, the client must be current on their mortgage and have made at least six mortgage payments. Um, if they've gone into forbearance, there's a little bit of different uh, calculations with that, but we can always touch, you know, touch on that if that um, applies to your client. And then you can get up to 100% LTV for VA cash out refis. All right, this is the last slide. Um, entitlement restoration, that is basically telling me or telling you that they have access to their entitlement for their entire lives. They can use it as much as they want, as long as it's available. Um, your entitlement will be restored when you're, you sell your property and the loan is paid in full. 
Um, one of the misconceptions is people say, hey, I have a VA loan, I'm going to refinance into a conventional loan and then I can basically buy another VA home loan. That is not true. Um, I've actually encountered many clients who thought that and got conventional loans and didn't realize they saw to put a down payment to buy a second loan or to buy a second home as their primary. And the reason is the VA is not there to help people, you know, build their their real estate portfolio. They're really trying to help people get into homes that they're going to live in. So what happens is you can do that once where you can retain your home and ask for restoration um, and then get your full entitlement back. But once you do that, if you want to get another home loan down the line, you have to dispose, which means sell of all your other properties prior to that. Um, so that's kind of just the gist of it. It's an amazing program. A lot of little ins and outs, but I'm happy to help if you have any questions. And um, is, is there anything that you'd like me to clarify or have any more questions about? Yes, thank you. I had a, a drop one in the um, chat box, but anyway, oh. for service. For service-connected disabilities, mm -hmm. is there also a partial property tax exemption? There actually is. Um, I'm not sure that I think you have to have 100% disability to get the exemption. I can double check on that. I know for sure if you have 100% disability, you will get um, partial property tax exemption. But um, if it's less than that, I, I'll double check that for you. I think you're okay. correct. It, it does have to be 100% um, disability to get the exemption. And it and it is partial. It's not a hundred percent exemption too, because I know some people right, it's were told that. Mm -hmm. it's so does that vary from state to state, or county to county? Um, I I can double check that. I know in um, San Diego that applies, um, but I can I can double check that for you. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Any other questions? Okay. <laughs> well, if that's all, um, you have my contact information. I know I'm kind of the same way whenever I get onto these calls. I, I get a little bit shy and don't want to ask anything. So uh, my email address is down at the bottom, acelin at loandeskmortgage.com. So is my phone number. Feel free to ask me any questions. Um, I'd be happy to help. And if you want a copy of any of these slides, let me know as well. Alrighty. Thank you, everybody.